I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. I'm so happy you're here. Oh, thanks. I'm really glad you had the uh, time for this. Oh, no problem. This is Dr. Rad. Uh, today I have Dr. Jason Tong with me. Um, before starting the interview, I want to actually personally thank you for introducing me to fasting. I'm an Arabian Egyptian uh, fasting advocate, and you were the one who got me into this in the first place. I know you you didn't invent fasting, but I, I think you're the <laughs> one who brought it into into light, especially in our in our age. And I really appreciate that. Oh, uh, for, first time I saw it was with Mike Mudzel on on uh, high intensity health, and it was a video titled uh, "Calories versus Hormones." And it actually did uh, catch my attention a lot because this is this was my my question. Uh, it was always in my head: Is it calories or is it hormones? And I think after this video, I never looked at uh, nutrition the same again. Because I knew it was hormones for me and for all uh, my clients. So I personally thank you for this. And actually, this is how I want to start. Uh, I want to start the interview. Uh, by discussing the difference between uh, a, a calorie a deficit, a regular dieting, which everybody does, and uh, fasting, which you're, I think you're the most popular uh, fasting advocate out there. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, I mean, it's really important because a lot of people think that there's no difference between just cutting calories and fasting. Um, and this is the message that's put out there to doctors and dietitians and everybody, but it's actually not true because if you think about the way that the human body works, there's, um, you know, we think of it as calories in, calories out, but that's not the way the body actually works, right? So when you eat calories, your body has actually one of two things it can do with it. It can store it away or it can use it for energy, for example. So it's one of these things where uh, what happens to those calories depends on what the hormones say. So if your insulin is high, so you eat your insulin is high, then your body is going to store those calories away. If your insulin starts to go down, then that is the signal for your body to take the, the calories that you've stored out of storage and use it. So this is what happens. So assume that uh, we eat 2000 calories. So suppose you eat from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And that's, so that's half the day. So you eat 2000 calories in a day, you're burning 2000 calories a day, your weight is stable. So if you eat uh, during your period of time that you're feeding, you're going to eat 2000 calories but it's only half the day. So you're only gonna burn 1000 calories, right? So the other thousand calories will go into storage. Then when you're not eating, that's your fasting period. So 8 p.m. and then you sleep and you wake up and eat the next day at 8 a.m. That's 12 hours. So again, uh, what happens is that as insulin falls, your body then signals that, hey, you need to pull some calories out and use them for energy, right? So you take a thousand calories and you put it into, into uh, you burn it for, for energy. So now you've got your 2,000 calories in, 2,000 calories out. So if you try to lose weight, and you reduce your calories to 1500 for example but you just keep taking in you just keep eating foods all the time like you're you're eating from the moment you get up to the minute you go to sleep and you're eating very low fat food so your insulin levels are high you're eating you know cake and donuts and chocolates and candy and all that stuff and you're eating all throughout the day there's no fasting period if your insulin level stays high then you actually can't take any of those calories out of storage Right, and that's the problem. We've known this for years, right? So insulin, what it does is it blocks the breakdown of glycogen in the liver, it blocks lipolysis. So when your insulin is high, your body wants to store those calories. It can't use those calories that you've put into storage. So what's important then is not necessarily the calories, but what your body has the instructions to do. Because if your insulin levels are high and you can't use those calories you've stored away, then your body's just going to keep storing it away. You can't use any of it. So, so, so if you eat 1,500, you're only going to be able to burn 1,500. And that's sort of what happens. So, you know, it's this idea of a calorie is a calorie is very dangerous because all different types of calories have different effects on our hormones. And we've pretended for so long, for example, that if you eat 100 calories of cookies and you eat 100 calories of eggs, that it's the same thing, 
but it's not. The minute you put the cookies in your mouth, compared to the, to the eggs, there's a completely different hormonal response. And you have to pretend that doesn't matter. But when in medicine do changes in hormones not matter, right? This is the yeah. instructions to our body as to what to do. You know, store calories versus burn calories, right? It's a very basic instruction. So if you're eating different foods, even if they're the same number of calories, if you're eating different types of foods, you're giving your body different types of instructions. And therefore, that's very important because if you can't get your insulin down, you can't ever use the glycogen that you stored away. You can't use the body fat because insulin inhibits lipolysis. That's like basic mm -hmm. sort of first year medical school stuff, right? If your insulin is high, and that's why when we, we prescribe insulin, people can't ever lose weight because the insulin is blocking them from burning that fat, right? So it doesn't matter what they were like before. You give anybody enough insulin, give it to them all day long, high doses of insulin, every single person gets fat. It's, it, it doesn't matter if you have willpower, if you don't have willpower, because your body can't ever use those fat stores. It's like a one-way valve, right? You're gonna put in the calories into storage, but you're never gonna take them out. Pretty soon you're not, you're, you're gonna gain, gain too much body fat. So I think that the, the problem with the calories in, calories out is a completely unphysiologic. Like the body has no calorie receptors. It doesn't respond to calories. It doesn't even know what calories you're eating. It responds to different types of hormones. That's the language that our body speaks. And yet somehow we pretend that all these different calories, whether it's cookies or whether it's salmon or whether it's fish or whether it's, you know, whatever you want, right? We pretend that all these calories have this are saying the same thing, but they're not. Like it's it's sort of ridiculous for us to mm. to talk about calories if we're talking about medical physiology, because the body doesn't work like that. It only works on hormones, hormone receptors. You know, if insulin is high, certain things happen. If uh, glucagon is high, certain things happen. If growth hormone is high, certain things happen. If cortisol is high, certain things happen, right? And that's what medicine is. And yet somehow we sort of ignore all of this medicine. And then when it comes to weight loss, we say, well, all calories uh, are, are the same. It's like, no, they have different hormonal effects and therefore they have different effects on our body. And what it comes down to overall then is that certain foods are more fattening than other foods, which is just sort of basic, basic common sense, it's right? It's not just because they have more calories. It's not just because they have more calories. Because and and honestly, if you were to talk to your grandmother or your great grandmother, they'd have told you, "You look, if you eat candy, you're going to get fat. If you eat broccoli, you are not going to get fat." And it really doesn't matter how many calories you eat or don't eat. It's the it's the instructions because when you eat cookies and when you eat candy and everything. You're giving your body the instruction to gain fat. When you're eating broccoli and eggs and salmon and meat, you're, you're not giving your body the instruction to gain fat. So when you eat those foods that are not fattening, then you're not going to get fat. That's, that's the bottom line. And it's a very common sense um, sort of conclusion because everybody who you, know, who you talk to about calories, they say, oh, you know, first law of thermodynamics and this and that. Yeah, it's like, I was just going to ask garbage, you this. Right? <laughs> because it doesn't break the first law, right? You take 100 calories, you can store it or you can burn it. The first law, law of thermodynamics still stands, right? You're still either using it or you're burning it. It doesn't matter. Like it's a completely irrelevant argument. And yet people say, oh, it has to be, has to be. It's like, I don't think those people really understand how the human body works. And the problem is that as doctors, we haven't really thought too hard about it and therefore we've let them sort of take over this discussion of oh it's all about calories all about calories all about calories but it's not it's about the hormonal instructions you give to your body which depends on two things one is which of course is the foods that you eat and two is whether you're not you're 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 getting into this fasting period where you're going to allow your insulin levels to fall low enough that you're actually going to start to pull those calories out of your your, your glycogen, which is, which is your uh, glucose, stored glucose, and body fat. Because if you do let your body fall into this you know, low insulin state, the fasted state, then you're gonna use up those calories. 
And, yeah. you know, it's a totally normal thing. Like people have been doing it for thousands of years, right? And, and that's the part that I thought very strange is as I started to think about it, I started to think, well, fasting is something that you could do. And everybody thought it was such a terrible idea five or six years ago or probably lo longer I've been now. doing it. And, <laughs> and <laughs> until now. And it's like, but that's yeah. ridiculous because you know that virtually every major religion in the world tells mm -hmm. their parishioners to fast at certain times, right? And it's yeah. like, even within the English language, you have a word called breakfast, break fast. It's the meal that breaks your fast, which means you have to fast in order mm -hmm. to break your fast. So you should be getting the 12, 13 hour fast every night. And, um, you know, to, to somehow think that our bodies can't handle it or we're doing irreparable harm. Well, you know that people have been going without food for, you know, for thousands of years. If so there's something intrinsically wrong with it, wouldn't we have figured that out by now, like 2,000 years later at least? Yeah, that's and, what I usually say. If uh, I think if it's like 2,000 years ago, you wouldn't even be having this conversation. Yeah. It wasn't an option. People used exactly. to fast because it was not an option. And, and, and the thing is that, isn't that precisely the reason that our body even carries body fat? It's mm. to provide you with enough calories when you have nothing to eat. That's like the, the only reason you practically, you carry the body fat in the first place. So therefore you're using your body fat for precisely the reason that our body has body fat. So what could be wrong with that? You know, it's like we store, it's, it's like if, if you store, you know, firewood for the winter sort of thing and you chop up wood and you chop up wood. Now you have so much wood that you actually have no room to put it. Well, why don't you just use it, right? So it's the same thing. We're storing calories, storing calories, storing body fat, storing body fat. Now it's making us sick and giving us type two diabetes. So let your body use it, right? There's yeah. nothing simpler in all of sort of all of nutrition, if you have too much body fat, then let your body use this body fat. Is it fun? No, not really. Can you do it? Yes. Will it make you healthier if you are overweight? Yes, it will. If you have type two diabetes, yes, you will. And that that's the point. Like we want to give people options. If if they don't want to do it, nobody has to do it. I'm not forcing anybody to do it but exactly. if you're if you're overweight and type 2 diabetes you know that you're at high risk of heart disease heart attacks strokes cancer i don't want those well somebody might want to say you know what maybe i will do a little bit of uh, maybe i would like to do something about it and fasting is 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 a perfectly reasonable option if you're if you're overweight right and and and, and the point is that it's a very powerful tool. You, you can use it or you can not use it, but why would we not have that tool available, right? It, it, it makes easy, no sense. Very simple, yeah, very it's simple. doable. Yeah, it's yeah. just like if you have a knife, right? It's like, well, you could cut yourself or you could kill yourself with a knife. It's, it's, but you can also, you know, use it to do a lot of good. You can, you know, chop up your vegetables and you can do all kinds of things with a knife. It's a tool, right? It can do good or it can do bad. It all depends on how you use it and what you use it for. But you would never say, well, knives can kill people, so we should ban knives throughout the world, right? It's never use a knife, right? It's like, that's ridiculous. You've got to know how to use that tool. And fasting is the same thing as a physician. It's like, this is a tool that I have at my disposal that I can help people lose weight, I can help people reverse their type 2 diabetes without drugs, without surgery. And still and be harmless. Totally, you don't have to worry yeah. about any side effects, you don't have to worry about anything actually. Yeah, and completely natural. And and yet, it's it's not being recommended, it's being actively discouraged. No, people freak like, out. Still people, people freak are freaking out, out from, from <laughs> just the idea of fasting, especially prolonged yeah. fasting.